Okay, so question 13 is pretty long. Um, it's a word problem, and it seems very big and intimidating, but it really is okay if you just take it step by step. So, a sample of an unknown hydrocarbon was vaporized and separated into its individual components based on their boiling points in a process known as gas chromatography. You may have seen this on CSI. <laughs> Six distinct molecules were detected, and all were determined to have the same molecular formula, C4H8. Um, so I wrote that down for the molecular, molecular formula. Um, the individual molecules were isolated and stored in separate containers. Unknown A was treated with Br2 in CCL4 solvent and resulted in a racemic mixture of products, but treatment with OSO4 and H2O2 provided a single optically inactive molecule. Unknown B was also individually treated with OSO4, H2O2, and Br2, CCL4, but in both cases it only produced, it, it only produced a single op optically inactive molecule. Um, unknown C was treated with ozonolysis reduction conditions and it, resu and it resulted in the formation of only one product. So, okay, all, given all that information, um, we're going to do this problem. So we have the molecular formula, and it says um, A through F are going to be six distinct um, molecules, so they're all going to be different molecules, so you can't use the same one t twice in um, A through F. So here, molecular formula, um, we get an IHG value of 1, so that means that we can either have um, a ring or one pi bond. So here are the six possible constitutional isomers. Um, I basically just said, okay, C4, so I just made a carbon chain that was four, um, four carbons long. And then I added in my double bonds here. These are diastereomers that you have to take into consideration when you're um, looking at constitutional isomers. And then um, also you could have um, two different rings. You can either have a four-membered ring or a three-membered ring with a substituent. And then you, um, those are all of them. So then now what, after doing that, we want to figure out um, which one of these is A through F using um, the information, information they gave us. So um, unknown A, when it's treated with Br2 and CCL4, resulted in a racemic mixture of products. So, um, when you have Br2 and CCL4, you're going to have an enantiomer with um, this um, cis-2-butene here. And with osmium tetroxide, you're going to get a single optically inactive product. So, this also works for cis-2-butene. When you treat it with OSO4, you get a meso product with an internal mirror. So, um, this is our answer for A, cis-2-butene, and you just draw it in the box that's provided. So now we can cross this off our list. We can't reuse this. So then unknown B was also individually treated with OSO4, osmium tetroxide, and Br2, CCL4, but in both cases produced a single um, optically inactive molecule. So we want something that's optically inactive for both of them. So let's say we tried, okay, so if this one didn't work, let's try maybe that. Trans-2-butene, a lot of people might try. Um, and when you do that, you get, let's see, so bromine adds anti, oops, anti I said. The two bromines add anti to each other. Oh my gosh, I'm messing up all over the place. Add anti to each other. And then osmium adds sin. So I can either show wedges or dashes, doesn't matter. So they add to the same base. So here, if I rotated this double bond, um, we would get something that's miso. That would look like this. But when you rotate this double bond, you realize that it's not miso. So 
that's not miso. So this molecule doesn't work for these conditions. We want something that's optically inactive for both conditions. So um, this isn't the molecule of choice. So instead, um, you could do trial and error. So we know this one doesn't work, um, and we need a double bond in one of these. So let's try um, this one. So for this one, um, when we treat with BR, um, we get And here I'm not even showing stereochemistry because neither of these carbons right here are chiral. So therefore it's not um, optically active. So that's true. And as we'll see here, when we add two OHs to the double bond, same thing applies. There's no chiral centers. Um, neither of these carbons are chiral. Therefore, um, this satisfies uh, the so this would be answer choice B. Um, and then part C, it says unknown C was treated with ozonolysis reduction conditions and it resulted in the formation of only one product. So um, if we tried ozonolysis conditions for this one, we would get two different products. We would get um, formaldehyde and we would get another aldehyde. Um, so that would form two different products. So we know that one wouldn't work. Um, let me cross out this because we can't reuse this again. Um, but you can kind of see if you have your list, if you use trans to butene um, and do ozonolysis to it, so you um, break the bond, put the o, uh, squeeze in your O's, and you get two of the same product. So um, you get acetaldehyde. So trans to butene is your answer for part uh, unknown C. So then over to uh, D, E, and F. So unknown D and unknown E both showed no reaction with Br2, CCl4. In separate combustion experiments, it was determined that unknown D gave off less heat on a per carbon ba basis than unknown E. So um, it's saying here less heat on a per carbon basis. That's The per carbon is very important. So, um, something that gives off less heat per carbon basis. Um, so, we're, here we're looking between the two rings. So, which one gives a less heat on a per carbon basis? It would be your um, cyclobutane. And that's because there is less of an angle strain, so this would be um, more unstable. Um, on a per carbon basis, but total, um, if we were to look total and not per carbon, um, the cyclobutane butane, sorry, would have an overall higher combustion because, heat of combustion, because just because there's more um, uh, carbons in the ring. Then, so more heat per carbon would be this um, molecule right here, and that's again because there's a greater angle strain. Um, so per carbon, that would give a higher heat of combustion. And then part F is just the only one remaining, so we knocked off all of these. So this is our only one remaining.